incense was devastated by the brisk bitterness of this place. As starvation led to unendurable pain, endless agony, hysteria took the helm, sailing even my most rational men into a dark and cruel unknown. Into this, the frozen white nightmare from which none of them would return. Mr. Red Graves. Lemon juice. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, Marlo, you've had yours. <sighs> Play the go round, Simmons. You have used rationing. Go back to the galley and clean your pot, you old crab. What are you sketching today, Redgrave? It's not finished yet. I don't matter. Ah. Ah. Who's she then? No one. Little fantasy of yours, eh, Redgrave? Scanty lad like you wouldn't even know what to do with her if you had her. You know, you keep your head buried in that journal, you might never actually experience any of this expedition with your own eyes. This is all we have to document our journey. When we're back to Britain from Mars, shall we selling these to the papers? Proof of our great rescue mission. Selling them? The better ones fetch me a good price. So while us petty officers are moping about listening to this racket, you're earning more than any of us without breaking a sweat. I perform every duty asked of me on Innsmouth. Teach me to draw like that. Can you draw, Marlo? I can do anything better than most men if I put my head to it. Come on. Help me on some extra for the family back home. There's time I'd consider it. Don't have much of a family, do you, Redgrave, from what I hear? You know nothing about me. <laughs> Just being friendly, lad. Will you draw me next, Charles? I want my face on the morning herald. <laughs> Your grubby mug's not worth printing on a Grittleton packet, let alone the herald. That's not what your wife was telling me the night before we set off. <laughs> I don't know how long we can continue this for, Red Graves. For goodness sake, we're stuck to last three years on this ship if needs be. And Captain Mortimer says we'll be headed back on close of winter. The captain's an optimist. Two winters passed before we came looking for Ibon. You think men like Marlow Spriggs are bastardly now? 
You wait to see how they behave on half rations, when their bellies are aching, and men like you become easy targets. Don't ever come to that. I've seen it, Charles. Men are like animals. They'll fight like dogs over a scrap of salt pork. Ah, oh, Christ. If we get caught, it'll be the cat and nines for us both. If anyone finds out, I'll take the blame. You can say I stole from the gully. Oh, I will. I've had some lashes in my time. Never again. The salt beef, you know where I keep the tins. So, Roland, Barnabas McCulloch is here to see you. He insists it's urgent. Send him in. Mortimer. Barnabas, old mate. Uh, a drink, perhaps? I'm afraid we have more pressing matters at hand, Captain. Best we keep all our wits about us now. Gideon. This is our passage. The same route mapped by Captain Steiner on the Eyebon. But the waters that we've sailed into are becoming ever more unsafe. We're floating off course, and the ice is growing thicker. The men have reported seeing great slabs pass us by. But Barnabas, the Innsmouth is no ordinary ship. My father had the hull plated with iron. We can cut through these sheets. Your father is back home in Griddleton Marsh. We are in the middle of a half-frozen polar ocean, Gideon, further north than any ship that safely returned has ever sailed. Pardon me, Mr. McCulloch. We are but days away from Sir William Strunner's last known position. We must be brave. We will return as heroes when we find the Ibon and her crew. For that, we may be required to take some risks. Believe me, Mortimer, I am as invested as you in finding your lost friend. But this, this is old ice. Navigating a safe passage is near impossible now we've entered these winter months. How impossible? We must set a new course. Retreat immediately, or the Innsmouth will freeze into the ice sheet, where it will remain for the rest of winter, floating further and further north until it is too late. It's a 400-ton ship, Barnabas. You underestimate her. I'm not talking to you, Gideon. Please, Captain. Gideon is right. We are a warship The Ibon was a schooner. To find Strino, we must follow his treacherous path as far as these waters allow. The Innsmouth has just returned from two years' service on the Mediterranean Sea. This is the unrelenting Arctic! Lower your voice, Barnabas. We are listening. Then hear me when I say, this place, it doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about your great desires or yearnings, your dedication to this cause. It only knows that we are warm flesh and blood, and how to freeze the very life from us. I will return with Strina, dead or alive. That was my promise, and I intend to keep my word. Here, here. Alter our course wherever you see fit, but we go onwards. We do not retreat. Captain. Listen to the captain. He's an Arctic veteran. We'll get us safely home. Lieutenant, you come into this position from a life of privilege. If you expect to return safely to that life, then shut up and listen to someone who knows what they're talking about. Our arsehole captain wants only to find Strainer and that doomed ship. I fear he sees the rest of us as expendable. He will not give you a second thought when you are cold and desperate and begging like a bitch for his help if this expedition goes awry. If you don't believe in our assignment, then why even come? I was ordered, Gideon. Because too few men on board Innsmouth know a bloody thing about polar exploration. What is it that you shall believe in here, Gideon? Is it Steiner's recovery? Or do you simply want to be the first to make this great voyage on board your father's precious vessel? Enough! I could make your life very difficult back home. If you don't start showing me some courtesy here, McCulloch. 
convince him to turn us around. You're as afraid as the rest of us. Mother of sweet divinity. Captain! Captain! Ready our men to dig. Dogs are barking at some out there. He's seals. Oh, dogs don't bark at seals. Listen up, chaps. Captain Mortimer wants you all out on the ice. We're going to cut a channel before we're completely frozen in. Up you get. I want you all gathered on the main deck in a quarter hour. I'm not going to let a patch of frost stop the Innsmouth in her tracks. Onwards to glory, men. Mr. Spriggs. Sir. You and Ashcroft go down to the cargo hold to check if damage. Right away, Lieutenant. If you'll pardon me, Lieutenant, someone should inform Redgrave. Perhaps he could check the old. Indeed. See that he helps. It would seem the size and strength of Innsmouth has worked against us. Shallow waters, gentlemen, and poor navigation. What use is a one-ton steam engine now, eh? But to sink us to the frozen depths. Just a minor worry of mine, Lieutenant. Redgrave! Redgrave! Redgrave, open up! What in the hell's name is this? Molly, please. You mustn't tell a soul. What's a woman doing on board, eh? You've been harboring a stowaway, Redgrave. That's a very serious and punishable offence. She was in the cargo hold. It was already too late. Captain will have you flogged. Both of you. That's something I dare say I'll enjoy. Other men's suffering can be quite entertaining. With a little else to keep you occupied. Keep this between us. For her sake. She has her reasons for journeying out here, Marlow. Please. What's in it for me? To keep my lips tight, eh? Oh. How about them drawings? Said they'd fetch a tidy price, did you not? Those are mine. If you wanted to buy my silence, this is a start. Give those back! Stop it! Oh, it speaks! I keep my pretty little voice quiet, others might hear you. Must think you're real smart, Redgrave. Never took you for much of a fanny rat. Keeping all that to yourself, was you? Better pray nobody else finds out. Could be dangerous having a rat aboard a boatload of men. All away from home, all missing their wives. Do you know what I mean, Redgrave? In a place so destitute of pleasures, some might not be able to control their urges. You're a bloody pig! I have a family out here, lost in an expedition. Can't you understand? Don't you have a brother or a sister? This is the Arctic, dearie. No place for you. It's not like the fanciful tales you read about back home. Even men struggle out here. Now, I'll escort you to the captain unless we got a deal, little Mr. Redgrave. Give it back to him. I got to the captain myself. Keep your shit drawings then. Oh. This will be worth it just to see Mortimer's face. And Redgrave, when your bollocks have come back down from your gut, Ashcroft's waiting in the cargo hold. You are to inspect it for damage. Captain! You'll bloody want to see this. What now? Mr. Spriggs, get in here! Stowaway, Captain Mortimer, sir. Found her hiding in Redgrave's cabin. How have we not noticed the stowaway on board? Redgrave kept her secret, sir. Warned that she'll be flogged, but she don't seem to give a monkey's ass. What's your name? Carmen. Carmen. I know not how or why you find yourself aboard the Innsmouth, hundreds of miles north in these Arctic waters. But we are ice locked. It was our greatest fear. Whatever you hope to achieve by coming here home, warmth, safety. Even the simplest comforts are far, far from us now. 
You must do as us men do, if you wish to live through this. No time for weakness now, lady. The Arctic has no mercy. Are you going to punish her? Our situation here is punishment enough. Ashcroft's in the cargo hold. Stay here. Keep watching her. Quickly, men. Christ! Get into the infirmary! Where's Ashcroft? Dead! He's dead! Dead! dead. There's something in the cargo hold, Captain. Some beast! Some creature! Barnabas! The infirmary! Redgrave, is that you? Something in the cargo hold, all right. Something deadly. How could we possibly have sailed this far with something of that size in the hold unnoticed? That don't belong to us because of the cat. We failed to notice a stowaway on board. There could be anything down there now. Something has found its way inside. I saw it. Creature. I can't explain it. It's amphibious and man like. Who have you given him, McCulloch? He's got bloody do land. No, 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 please. Walked like us, did it? The face and features of some fish. Fins. <laughs> and gills and. webbed hands and rows of horrid cracked teeth and. Calm yourself, lad. Oh. This creature. Could you draw it, Mr. Redgriff? Maybe we should let him rest, Captain. Draw exactly what you saw, that's an order. Fantasy, I'll not believe it. Stay with Redgrave. The men await me on the main deck. Marlow, I want everyone on board armed. Take this and fill it with every musket and shotgun we have. My captain.
everything you can. We're going onto the ice. Outside. We must get off this ship. Let me creature you see. Kill the damn thing. My captain. You're watching over the stowaway. She's on the ship. You wanted to save her. Oh, damn you, Gideon. Stop. For God's sake, we stay together. You'll die out there alone. They're coming for us. Sir Roland, it's every man for himself in there. Anyone left is surely dead by now. I feel my eyeballs freezing in their sockets. <sighs> Just don't take a dick out for a piss or you'll freeze the tip off. And there'll be very little left. Captain, there's nothing out there but ice and misery. Keep moving, Marlow. Don't give up. Give up what, Captain? All is lost. Oh, you're still thinking about Steiner, aren't you? <sighs> He's out there. They could help us. Oh, for God's sake, Roland! They may be our best chance of survival now. You just can't give it up, can you? Why? All our men are dead. No doubt we'll either starve or freeze out here. How are you still so helpless? I'm trying to find them now. Schroeder is my brother and partner for decades. We traveled the world together. He's like a brother to oh. me. And yet, he came to cross the North Pole without you. We came to rescue the man, not end up stranded like him. Or are we that sick? If they're out there, they could save us, you moron. Strina had the I-Bond built wide and shallow. She was to freeze into the ice and drift with the currents over the pole. In theory, or it could be sunk years ago. Roland, the I-Bond could be anywhere. We'll never find it! So what? Should we just lie down here in the cold and die? I'll search for Strina until my dying breath.
Men! Captain! It's Redgrave, sir! To the stowaway! Oh. Oh. You're alive! Yeah. Are there any other survivors? Not that we could see, Captain. I thought we were the only ones out here. You left us to die. She came back for you. I owe her my life. Can you go on, man? You can make it with some help. Barnabas, Gideon, lend him a hand. Captain, in the mountains, there's an opening. How far? Probably not even half a mile. Half a mile, and there may be shelter. I don't know, Captain. I can't feel this leg anymore. If you can't feel it, then it shouldn't be as painful. We can't stay out here, it's too dangerous. I know we're almost there, and I know that Ibon is out there. I know you can make it. Marlo, give him a hand. Why can't the woman do it? She dragged him out here. She's done enough. Be anything in there. If it's free of wind and snow, I'm willing to take my chances. Oh, we can't stay out here. Stay together. Looks like we weren't the first to find this place. One of Strainer's men. Oh, that's just perfect. You can all guess what killed him. He's been shot. Arm yourselves. Be on your guard.
Get here. You. Have you used a gun before? I'll manage. Two of us should go on ahead. Make sure it's safe before we venture much deeper. Lieutenant. I'll come. Best not to argue with her. Wait here. Going on. I told you to stay put. We heard screaming. It's, it, it's nothing. These mountains seem empty, for now at least. Only the dead rest here. Oh, that's, that's bloody repugnant. That's, that's revolting. Mother, that's enough. We will cover him up. Don't you touch him. Don't you dare. Leave her. Come on, let her be. We wanted the Arctic to be a place for a woman. Go on ahead. I'll find somewhere close for us to settle. This way. Supplies to last us a week at most. Great work, McCulloch. Someone will eventually have to journey back. If there's any supplies on the ship, we're going to need it. And if Finsmith has been crushed and sunk, it'll be a wasted trip. We have a month at best before starvation takes hold of all of us. There's enough food on board Innsmouth to last us years. In that time, a rescue party will find us. Years? How many years? Hopefully, not too many, Redgrave. What well, if nobody's coming for us? of yours. It's, uh, it's... It's warm now. It's warm, you say? I don't think it's too bad. We should all check our feet. Don't want to find our toes turn black 
Black. Frostbite, kid. Can you feel this? Huh. This. 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 I'm like I empty well enough to walk again, sir. Just rest up, Mr. Redgrave. Surely the best option is to just chop it off, or else the infection will spread. Giddy, we will not be amputating any limbs here. We don't have the necessary medical supplies to do so safely. Then he's certain to die. Keep your bloody voice down. Every day he's alive, he'll be eating through our rations, scoffing what few supplies we have left. We're already facing starvation. Starvation we could alleviate if we just look at the situation rationally. He's a burden on us. Gideon, it isn't just your life at stake here. You don't have any exclusive entitlements out here in the wilderness. Rank? Especially when it's as ill-deserved as yours. Doesn't matter here. We all need to help each other now. As Captain Mortimer insisted. You said every man for himself. Those were your words. I was scared. And irrational. For God's sake, Gideon. Be a man. Where are you going? If you don't mind, Redgrave, I'm off to take a shit. Or would you rather I do it here so you can absorb the odours? Right, pop it. Prentice over there can watch over you now. William. Shh. They like it. The ichthyoids. They enjoy our music, can you believe? You're alive. <laughs> it's a gramophone. The gift of the Lady Charlotte. One of the few things I salvaged from the wreck. Come in where I can see you, man. In the name of Dagon. <laughs> Roland Mortimer. Only man I knew I could depend on. You finally came. You're alone, William. Are there others? All dead, dear friend. But I'm far from alone. <laughs> <laughs> you found the book, I presume. It led you to these mountains. That rotten old thing you left behind. You had time to study its pages as I did. It's just gibberish, William. All gibberish. <laughs> 
Ach, Mortimer, you were always so simple-minded. You could never match my accomplishments. You've seen the ichthyoids. The what? The ichthyoids. Creatures from the ice. They annihilated my crew. So you know that they are real. The pages of the book speak true. You came here for the North Pole, not because of some book. You want to be the first. You're obsessed. The pole was never the prize. It was always them. The deep ones. They are exactly as they are depicted. Only more exquisite. Don't you see, Roland? Land. Water. This freezing ice. They can endure it all. You speak of them as if they're intelligent beings. Yes! Yes, their intelligence is staggering. They are superior, and we are their servants. Come, sit with me and celebrate. Two years' isolation in the gloom has clouded your thoughts, William. You have lost your own purpose. Mortimer, the government was never going to fund an expedition based on some obscure Arabic book. I had to mount an expedition on the pretense of being the first to reach the geographical North Pole. I lied to you, Mortimer. The very notion of us conquering the universe is lunacy. <laughs> Exploring every corner as if we were the first. If not for the Pole, then what was your plan? What delusions has that book seeded in your brain? Why? Return with my ichthyoids, of course. You can't be serious. They'd wreak havoc on land. There'd be war. Yes, yes. And we would be on their side, you and I. You'd let loose the most hideous creatures I've ever laid eyes on in our home. I'll not allow it. Ha! Too late, Roland, you came. You are the rescue party, the bridge between the ancient beings and all of pitiful mankind. I'd rather die than take home a plague of death. Don't be foolish. You're insane, William. No, not insane. But I have had two years to think it through, to comprehend the master plan. You've had two minutes, Roland. Your puny human mind can't comprehend it now, but it will. And then it will all make perfect glorious sense. I came for you. I kept my promise. I risked my life. My crew. Men died in the quest to find you. And now you speak of mankind as if they're expendable. Have you no care, sir? Did God care when he flooded the earth? Did he care when he sent a pestilence to kill thousands in Israel? You're psychotic. No, I am more than human. I have knowledge, Roland. I have seen what our future is. If you want to live, you'll come to your senses. But you need me, Roland. You need me!
Get your dog, you dear! What about her? Neighbor! She's no use to us now! Got Marlow. Captain! Wait! Captain! We can't give up yet, Captain. You're better than that. We can't go home. We mustn't go home. They'll send a rescue party. No, they can't see what we found here. <sighs> Others will come, men like Stroner, men like me. But there was no expedition to the Pole. He only came for them. Captain Stroner, he's alive. <sighs> Something resembling him and his worst qualities. <sighs> Rescuing him now is the last thing on earth you want to do. <sighs> the inns must must be destroyed. We cannot let them leave. But they'll send a rescue ship. Well, I pray they don't make it this far. Captain, that's a huge sacrifice. Not just for you, but for all of us. I know. I'm sorry, but it must be done. If you're certain, Roland, if you're sure this is the thing to do. Who knows? Are those creatures real? Are our men truly slaughtered? What's real, Captain? That's our worst nightmares. Then Strino must be killed before this progresses any further. But, Captain, you know that. I know, that's... I know, but it's my duty. And the Innsmouth? Do we leave her to the ice? We don't risk her making it through winter. There are explosives on board. Leave it to me. What in God's name 
Will you tell the rest of them? Leave them their hope. Just a little longer. Why do I have to go? Why can't the captain take care of it? Because you're lieutenant. It's what you signed up for. It's your duty. Well, take her with you. She's not scared of these things. She's staying to watch over Redgrave and fight them off if they come back. Well, I can do that. <laughs> you don't give a damn about Redgrave. And when it comes to those creatures, you're bloody useless. Oh, please, just give me a chance. Gideon, without the supply run, we won't last a week. You'll be safe with Barnabas. I'll be praying that you're all here and alive when we return. It's only a matter of time before they come back to feed. Good luck. Captain. Captain. Wouldn't it be better if we all went back to the ship? You'd never make it. No one should have to stay here because of me. It's only a matter of time before the ice crushes the ship. This is our base now. I'll not leave you behind. Then what's our plan? We can't just sit and wait for them to pick us off one by one. Why wait? Why not fight? Lay every last one of them to waste. There could be hundreds of them out there. Good. More for me to kill. We've already lost Spriggs. We need to be careful. Look after our wounded. I'm not his nurse. I'm not here to mother anyone. I'm here to survive, to fight for my life. You've underestimated me, Captain, and I overestimated you. From here on, I do things my way. No more hiding. We could man the ship ourselves, couldn't we? And go for help. We're not leaving them in the mountains, Gideon. We need to return and save them later. They only have a week's supply of food, for Christ's sake. It just feels wrong going back there to those things. We don't have a choice, Gideon. We don't have to listen to everything Captain Mortimer says. Following him has done none of us any favours. As long as we are out here, he is still our captain. Once fear and hunger take hold, we will struggle to behave rationally. Let's just follow orders. Stay alive. Mortimer. You've come to your senses, I presume. You'll join me in my insurrection of the Ancient Ones. Step into the light so we can Negotiate. There's no point to playing these games, William. I've sent my men to destroy the Innsmouth. You've no way home. Liar! I followed your lead. Walked in your shadow. But this madness, I cannot permit it. Madness? <laughs> if you think you can stop them, you're the one who's mad, Mortimer. But why help them, damn you? They came to me in dreams chose me to awaken them from their deep and endless slumber. Flesh and blood, Mortimer. The key to their rebirth. Join me in their servitude. Or die! What have you become, you monster? I 
I'm more than unhuman. No! There's still time. We can send them back to their sleep, William. <laughs> ah! oh! Don't try and stop me. I have an army of them at my side. Changed, Mortimer. I've embraced their ways as they have embraced mine. When I arrived, they walked on all fours, but they developed. Soon they were walking upright like us. Faster, more agile. Is that not brilliant? And they're my discovery. My Gift to the world. <laughs> Eat this. Those things are still on there. No time for your cowardice now. You head to the galley. On my own? Oh, for God's sake, yes, Gideon. Oh, stop talking to me like that. I'm scared. Keep your bloody voice down. We don't have time for this. Going! I have to find something. Barnabas? Barnabas, is that you? instructed us to blow up the ship. Blow up the ship? It's too much to explain now. But we must follow his orders. Trust me. Barnabas, this is my ship. It's already way out of here. 
the way home. We can't go home. Not with those creatures potentially aboard. Think, Gideon. We must sink it. We can't wait two more years for a rescue party to come for oh, us. Get your hands off me! We'll be dead by then! We're all gonna die anyway, Gideon! I tried to warn you about our situation. I did want to get us into this. But people like you and Mortimer had to have things your way. Well, damn you! Then we all must pay the price! I have accepted my fate. So for once in your bloody life, stop being so gutless and lend a hand. <laughs> I'll show you. this happen? She was a stowaway. Oh, magnificent. They've never seen a female. This will be a first for them. <laughs> <laughs> Just think what they can learn from her anatomy. Think of what they can do to use her. <laughs> Stroyman, captain of the eyeball. Well, what's left of him anyway? It's been many years since I set eyes on a woman. If my hands weren't tied, I would be inside you in a heartbeat. <laughs> you knew my brother, Benito. Benito. 
Nito. Yes. Yes, yes, I remember. A weakling. <laughs> Blew his brains out. Such a waste. It's not what I brought him out here for. You lend those men out here to die. Sacrificial lambs, Mortimer. I came here with a cargo of living flesh. Their deaths are insignificant in the wake of my discoveries. It was my family. <laughs> How many of them you bring here to die? How many of them you take from their families? Oh, does it matter? Human life is so short and utterly pointless. Tell her, Roland, the ichthyoids live for eons. Not when I shoot them in the head. This is who we came here for? The great captain of the North Pole? He lied. At least we have him now. Captain! Captain! Gideon. Watch Redgrave. Uh, they attacked us. They came out of nowhere. Uh, what, what happened? They killed Barnabas. I couldn't fight them. All, all right, all right. The Innsmouth. Is she destroyed, Gideon? Uh, we sunk it. With dynamite. Uh. Good, good. At least he didn't die in vain. Uh. I'm sorry I couldn't bring supplies, Captain. I had to get out of there. Captain? What is it, Captain? Nothing. Go on. Rothson. Gideon? You. You're Captain Strainer. They found you. Captured me, actually. I thought Mortimer was your friend. So did I, my boy. But the cold does things to a man's mind, it gives him strange inclinations. Nobody's thinking rationally anymore. Exactly. Mortimer was devastated I'd got this far. He wants the glory for himself. They tried to blow up my father's ship, HMS Innsmouth. So, did they? I stopped them. <laughs> oh, clever. You really are Sir Henry's son. I had much admiration for your father. If I'd been captain of Innsmouth, I would have had you back before winter. I could have saved you this suffering, Mr. Roth. I just want to get back to England. I can get you home. Indeed, we'd have to wait until the ice melts, but I could Captain Innsmouth back to land. Years I've waited for you to find me. Years I've suffered in this freezing darkness. These mountains can be cruel, Mr. Roth. You escaped the creatures. Dogs. Now 
nothing more than dogs that can be taught to respect their masters with a few simple tricks. Your crew, I've seen the bodies. They had small minds. They lost themselves in these mountains of madness. But you're smarter than them. You see this wretched body of mine? Is that what you want to become? No. Then free me. Free me, and together we'll escape this place. my dreams. Those dreams belong to me. Captain! Captain! Thank you. Better move quickly, Mr. Roth. You... You killed Redgrave. If you want to get home, you will do as I say. No time for questions. Redgrave anymore. This is it! The obelisk. The great stone that commands the Deep Ones. Commands them? I said we were going home, Mr. Roth. I never said we'd be going alone.
Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures! <laughs> you walk out of here. No puny human can stand in their way. Come out and fight like a man! Drop the gun. Stop this. Come home with me, Roland. Nobody is going home.
so many years out in the cold. But at least you'll feel a little warmth on the way out. Dignity. <laughs> 